Hello everybody and welcome to a very exciting episode of Wine Library TV. I'm your host Gary Vaynerchuk and today we are very fortunate to have a California legend, Tony Katori, with the Katori wines which are just pretty much profound, legendary, organic wines. These wines were in the wine shop the day I started working for my dad and if I remember correctly, they were virtually the only $15 plus Zinfandels we sold back then in the early 90s. Uh, it's a winery that has tremendous cult following and we're extremely fortunate to have Tony here. More importantly, it gives you a sneak peek of how we buy here at the Wine Library. We have not had current releases of these wines for a little while, kind of fell through the cracks with all the renovations. And so basically, this is how we do it. We come, we, we taste through the wines and we make decisions. So we're going to do that live, basically, in front of you now. And so uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll allow Tony to really give you a quick little history, five second lesson, and then we'll get into the wines. Thanks, Gary. Pleasure, great, great being here. Um, I didn't realize the history that we went back to. <laughs> well, uh, 27 years, overnight success. <laughs> no, it's been a struggle, you know, and it's, it's been extremely, extremely gratifying that the last couple of years, this this whole niche of, of winemaking and grape growing has really come to the forefront. Sure. We just came out of, in March, the, the Biodynamic Organic Tasting in downtown Manhattan, and it was exciting. I mean, and when you guys started with our wines 20 years ago, we would have been the only people in the room. Yeah. And now there's 80 wineries that are doing it. And I'll tell you, you know, I mean, it would be easy for me to say, well, I did this, I did that. That's not the point. It's really for the consumer and for the environment that these wines are here. You know, I mean, you've got pure wines, you've got organically grown grapes, properly grown, and I think that's the real message is that the time has come that we've got to start taking care of ourselves and the world we live in. And, you know, simple, and that's it. Uh, I can't agree with you more. And basically, uh, we're going to flash the uh, website below uh, on this video right now. Hopefully our editing team does that. And uh, and so you should definitely check it out because it's a wealth of knowledge. It's an amazing family story. I can obviously, you know, relate being in a family business. And, uh, you know, to keep it so that you're not watching this for the rest of your life, we're going to start tasting the wines. Great, so great, great, great. tell me what we're doing here well, first. The first one is our Charbonneau 2004, a rather obscure varietal. We're starting to work uh, in Mendocino now. This is coming from the test of vineyards. Uh, the, the original vineyards were planted in 1917. The Charbonneau was planted in the mid-50s. A very interesting story on Charbonneau as far as our, our research. It's supposedly a hybrid with Nebbiolo and Grenache. Okay. So someone really woke up one morning with quite a hangover <laughs> to put something like that together. But the really interesting thing about the wine is that the beautiful color, but the structure of the wine is very much like a white wine. So when I do uh, winemaker's dinners, this is the wine that we choose to do with the seafood. Actually, last night we did a, a dinner at um, Pierre's in, in Morristown. Great restaurant. And, and we, we did the, the, the fish. They had uh, some black cod, and a, a black bass, rather, that was matched with this uh, Charbonne. And Michael was a little bit nervous. Worked beautifully. Good. Well, let's taste it. Well, one, of the, one of the attributions you'll see immediately in Katuri wines is there's a, a very fair amount of terroir. A really sense of place to them. In the old days, people used to call it funky, but now that we're discovered, it's, <laughs> it's terroir, the French word for the taste of the earth. And I think this is something that really is connecting people to where these grapes come from. And that's the real key to it. It has a sense of place, it tells a story. I, I think what you're getting in this episode is that this is the real deal. You know, so much now in the wine business is about making a wine that has a critter on it with a catchy name and tons of marketing. This is the real stuff. This is what Wine Library TV has been about. This is what we've been trying to send through the message. Hey, listen, I'm the biggest fan of marketing. So, you know, I, I'm a big believer in it. But, however, I'm very fortunate to be in a business where there's trueness. And this is as true as this gets. And these guys have not been doing it now because it's cool. These are guys that, you know, have been doing it forever. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really amazing and exciting, I'm sure, for you and your family to finally, you know, to get the recognition that they really deserve. I mean, it's been a long time coming. And again, and, and listen, these wines are not for everyone. Right. You know, these are very interesting wines. For me, they're extremely interesting because they're so debatable. You've got people who love them, and you've got people who really hate them. I mean, I'm not trying well, to get in trouble that's here. That's but that's, 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 that's what it comes to. These are very passionate wines and these are wines that you know this is what makes the wine business so interesting so let's let's try this out I'm sure you just drink your mm -hmm, wine right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm spinning right? Um, again no question I, I taste the acidity level which is very high and I think that's the core of some of the debates with this wine but the, the nose for me is 
is amazing. I mean, the the, the rose petal, uh, I get quite a bit of a... Uh, tell me about the Testa Vineyard. I um, started working with the Testa Vineyard in 2001. Uh, the Testa family first plantings were in 1917 with the Carignan. We're producing a Carignan from vines that were planted in 1917. Still producing, still producing, you know, and the, the beauty of it is it's like we're going back the way things used to be in the wine country. Here's a family owning the same vineyard for four generations. It's amazing. You know, and, and Mendocino is a hotbed of what we're trying to do. They passed the first uh, uh, anti-GMO initiative as a county. Uh, we can't do it in Sonoma. They did it up there. Nice. The, the amount of organic vineyards, the, the, just the insight and the, the enthusiasm for what what these wines are standing for is like going home. So I, mean, I, I, really assume, going I assume home. you're going to be looking to buy more grapes. From right. You know, we started out, you know, really, we started out with like two tons of Carignan in 01. Last year I bought 35 tons. This year we've taken the whole vineyard over 40 acres. So, that's I mean, great. that's how, how much I think of it. Beautiful. I, I, I have to agree with Tony. I mean, I, the acidity is high, and so you have to be aware of that again. But um, the, the, the fruit is very, very complex, and the mid palate. I find to be very interesting, and that, that kind of is what makes uh, it a very interesting wine. Again, if nothing else, if you've never had a Charbono, you know, I've always considered Katori and Summers the two that I've always liked, Summers being a little bit of a different, more Napa style. And these are very true wines. Most importantly, if you're a Bouquet fan, on the nose, this is incredible. I mean, it's so complex, it's so different, so interesting. It's filling the room, uh, and it, it's, it's quite interesting. So, let's Every move wine on. drinker should have tried a Charbonneau in their career. As every wine drinker good. should try every grape out that's there true, in their career. True. I'm a big believer okay. in it. So now we have our, this is a, a, a young vineyard. It's a Lost Creek Vineyards in Anderson Valley. Yorkville Highlands is actually the official appellation of it. Uh, this is the new California-style Pinot Noir, the new rootstock, the new clone of, of, of uh, Pinot Noir, working with the grower, uh, um, uh, Steve Peters. Uh, very, very interesting. It's a, a lighter style. You know, talk, there again, you've got that beautiful, fun <laughs> yeah. you know, have to call Talk it about terroir. Toir. This is a terroir-driven wine from an area that is just starting to be recognized as a great, good place to be growing Pinot Noir. You know, this that, is not for the faint-hearted on the nose. You know, this yeah. is really... Well, Give you know, to. dare we say Burgundian. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, you got to tell me about this label. It's right. not the most conservative label no, I've ever you know, seen we, we've, we've been working with the, 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 original, the original Couture label for 27 years. Um, we decided that we needed to do something different, to try something different. We've, so we have a, a, a couple new labels that we're working with. But the real irony about it is, Gary, we put them out there and people they don't even look at the label. They want the wine, yeah. you know, which yeah. is really the gratifying. Brand is there. Sure. We, really, we were thinking, man, is this the way to go? Are we going to get controversy? They, they want what's inside. The they want, you know, and that's. And I think that's, you know, that's Katuri, feeling, right? Katuri's never going to be on on the on the shelves of people and say, oh, there's a Katuri. It's going to be having to be pointed out. Somebody has sure. to. It's say, a hand sell. Hand sell. So yeah. we got the paper bag on. And this is the new medium for hand sell. You know, using video and a right. blog. And, right. and I noticed you guys on your website have a podcast. And you know, so it's exciting to see that you guys are jumping on the forefront of that as well. The really fun thing already, the nose is starting to move from that really no earthiness question. into. You're starting to get fruit. No yeah. question about right. it. Right. So I mean, it, it's a nice, nice development of how how a wine really works through a, through a glass. This is a complete no-brainer to me. Again, let's use suggested retail here since I don't know the price. What price range? About twenty dollars. This is a steal. I mean, really if is. that's the case, that means we'll probably be a little bit less, and that would absolutely mean that this is an absolute steal. I love the fruit on this wine. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really this is lovely. a great wine to try because you can see where the nose is fundamentally completely different than the fruit. And that happens so much in Pinot Noir. You get that really earthy, you know, crappy kind of smell in the nose. Barnyard. Barnyard. Mushroom. Yeah. Sweaty socks. Yeah, you know, there all you the go. terms we there like to go. use. But then on the fruit, it's it's just a completely different experience. You get the real strawberry. Mm -hmm. I like that quite and a bit. There again, some nice city, great structure. 01 is probably one... 9701, I think. Yeah, yeah, the two big vintages. Two, two big vintages, especially for winemakers. Sure. Okay. The next one is one that's really close to me. This is uh, our Founders Series Sangiovese, a picture of my dad, done in 1943 when he was 26 years old. Red. I, uh, red. Itinerant uh, artist going through California from Mexico. His name was Antonio Aguilar, doing paintings and, and, and uh, pen and inks of working people. And that's, you know, and the really interesting thing, and, and it's, you know, so t close to all of us, 
the, the painting the painting just literally bounced around the house. It was, on a, it, it was done on a piece of cardboard, a little frame. Then when my dad passed on, we realized what a legacy we had in this. And, and to do an honor like this was just, I mean, it was healing. I mean, that, the bottom line on this was a, was a healing experience. And the first vintage was... not. 97, 97, which was a, uh, we had a Sangiovese and a, and a Cab Sangiovese blend. So there's two wines within this series. Got it. Both of them patterned after Tuscan wines, where his father came from. You know, the family legend taught how to make wine by the, the monks outside of Farnenta, and then on to my dad, to me, and now my son, Nick, is getting into the business. So. How old is Nick? He's 21. Exciting times. It really is. It truly is. And I, I'm finally aware of how much I don't know through him. <laughs> Us young people, we think we know oh, yeah, everything, yeah. you know. Wow, this has an amazing nose. This, I mean, that's Sangiovese, you know. It's sure, just, it's, it's classic. Classic. I mean, earthy, uh, just you smell that you smell the vineyard. Nice dark color, medium to dark. You definitely smell the color. Two thousand and two. Very late harvest. Cool weather. We had to hang the there's grapes. There's a lot of residual sugar. Right. There's a certain sweetness to it. We finally had a pick. We couldn't let them hang any longer. Or you would but, have had dessert wine. Right. And the acid level is so high on it. I mean, it just the beauty of it is the 15.5 alcohol. The sweetness probably comes. a little bit higher. Yeah, no, that's right. I do the <laughs> testing. Got it. The, the 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 sweetness comes and the acid just closes it like a door. I mean, it's just beautiful with. And the only time. 140 cases. Under 140 made. cases. Yeah. That's a that's a half a day at the office at Wine Library. Mm -hmm. You know, so great. Wow, this is really intense. And again, suggested retail on this is $30. $30. I'm going to even taste a little bit more. And again, you know, here's what gets really interesting. You know, we're talking a lot about Couture. Let's talk a little bit about the wine business because I know you guys like this. This would be what would be considered to me a very big dilemma wine. Wine's awesome. Wine's got tons of fruit. It's very friendly. It's California Sangiovese for $30. It's about as unmarketable as it gets. So it takes a lot of work and effort. And, you know, and that's a, that we're into. That's what we really we're known for. And this is the kind of wine where I would have to rate it because a lot of the major press wouldn't score this wine or you have to wait. Or a lot of times the major press doesn't understand wines like this. And that, that hurts. And then this way, you know, I rate something a 91 where they got an 84 spectator and I got to hear 100 comments from every uh, customer in the world. Right. But the reality is it's a very interesting wine. Ranks up there with many to me the super tuscans that are twice the price of this wine and 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 the, you know what's funny about this wine the reason i would bring it in is because i i think the residual sugar or the high amounts of sugar is a benefit i think sugar is a secret in wine i think kendall jackson and yellowtail are successful a little bit because of sugar mm -hmm. and more importantly it's very very nice on the palate right you know it's right. an easy drink well and then to bring it to the wine natural wine making you have another preservative with sugar for, sure. the, for the long for the aging potential of a wine like that and that's why the dessert wines last so right, exactly, long exactly exactly i really like this wine quite a bit I, no, what i also you. like is that i think that there's really firm firm uh tannin structure i mean this is a wine you pretty much this is going to be a long aging. Oh yeah, I mean it's four years old and it's a baby. I yeah, mean it's you, you could think infant. it's an 04. Great wine. Now the fun. One. Now the fun one. Now the Let fun me, one. I'm going to rinse this glass out. If you're ever out of glasses, you can do the same. Okay. The big rinse is something we talked about once before. I didn't want to clean enough glasses today, so that's that's where that happened from. Okay, so. So this is a, a, a blend that we're working with, uh, with Rat's Restaurant down at the, uh, uh, the Sculpture Gardens, uh, J. Stewart Johnson Sculpture Gardens. He has a restaurant called Rat's. They're, again, the most unlikely name for a restaurant, but it's taken after Wind in the, Wind in the Willows, uh, the Mr. Rat, the very hospitable person. The great restaurant. To get into the restaurant, you walk through a gypsy wagon that they brought over from Europe. Yeah, so here you you have a restaurant where it's unlimited on what they can do, and, and they have done it. They, they came to the winery in 01. We started our what first. What a label. Our, stirs, our first vintage was in 01, uh, doing essentially Bordeaux-style blends. This is a Cab, Cab Franc, Merlot, and a little bit of Syrah. Looking for you know a very dry-style uh, dinner wine. It's been very, very successful. An, an interesting story. When, when Mr. Johnson's in town, he's a man that could have any wine. And in cellar, he has any wine. When he's out in the, in the, uh, out in the dining room, this is the wines that he carries around and shows to people. He's extremely proud of it, extremely proud of the label. And, and only 120 cases 125 made. cases, correct. Classic Bordeaux-type yeah, nose, right. you know. But the, is there Syrah? There's Syrah. Yeah, There's a little, really little get, Syrah. Yeah, I can that, get that. To, to bring it in a little more to American palates, you know. We didn't want it to be completely austere.
big tannins on the mid palate. Beautiful acidity. Really nice. Great structure, great framework. Really nice wine. Thank you. And suggested retail for this guy? It's about $65. You know, this is obviously a very serious wine. And again, these are the kind of wines that I don't think you're going to just walk into the wine store and buy, you know, bottles of or cases of because you've never heard of it. And that's really where tasting and, you know, taking your palate to a different level comes in. You know, I've only been doing it for a short time. Tony and his family has been doing it for a long time, and they've really been on the cutting edge of doing something different. And if nothing else, I hope this episode shows you the passion that they have, the passion we have, for really giving you a different experience. These are wines we're going to recommend. You're going to see them on the website soon. And, uh... I just want to thank you for coming out. Well, today. Gary, thank you. It's been a Thanks pleasure. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time on Wine Library TV.